edition of Airwaves, firefighters battle the heat to stay mission ready. Plus, celebrating excellence, a look at this year's Commander's Awards. And a replica of the Curtis Pusher offers a unique look at Naval Aviation's first flight. We're navigating the news of NAVAIR. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Proof. I'm Major Nicole Mann, and thanks for joining us. The Navy and Marine Corps are one step closer to fielding an unmanned cargo helicopter. The K-MAX is the first of two UAS helicopters that could be delivered to the warfighter by the end of the year. The K-MAX is designed for repetitive lifting and can carry loads of up to 6,000 pounds. The hope is to keep trucks off the road and troops out of harm's way. The K-MAX will undergo testing while at Patuxent River to determine if it is field ready. Have you ever wondered what it was like to fly in the early days of aviation? Well, now you may have your chance. Engineers at Patuxa River have volunteered their time to build a flight simulator based on the first aircraft to take off from a ship. In 1910, civilian pilot Eugene Ely flew a Curtis Pusher off USS Birmingham. A replica of the Curtis Pusher was tested to reproduce the characteristics of that first flight. So this airplane was built by Bob Kulbaugh and he built it uh, faithfully to the the aerodynamic dimensions of Ely's original airplane. He researched this uh, at length and really uh, faithfully reproduced those aero characteristics of uh, Ely's Curtis Pusher. So it's really an aviation archaeology exercise that we can do safely and more importantly we can uh, allow a lot more people to experience that through simulation. Engineers hope to have the Curtis Pusher Simulator available to the public by the end of the year. If you would like to learn more about this year's centennial of Naval Aviation Celebration, visit the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil. Celebrating a job well done, Vice Admiral David Archizel hosts this year's Commander's National Awards Ceremony at NAS Patuxent River. The event recognized NAVAIR employees for outstanding work in support of the military. Our connection to the fleet is real. And what we do is important and has consequences. Our sailors and Marines rely on our technical, business, and leadership excellence to sustain and deliver the product they need to achieve mission success. Being here at the Commander's Award and having my security team, my folks, uh, uh, recognized for the accomplishments over the past uh, year uh, was very rewarding. Uh, appreciate it very much. Vice Admiral Archizel presented six Commander's Awards. To see a full list of the award winners, check out the NAVAIR news page. The Test Pilot School at Naval Air Station Patuxent River offers the only rotorcraft program in the United States. The intensive year-long program combines classroom curriculum with flight training. Students learn how to test helicopters using four different types of aircraft, including the UH-72 Lakota, which joined the Test Pilot School last year. The concept is they fly as many different aircraft as possible. So it's like if you wanted to, uh, if you want to go and look at a car, you're not going to just look at one car, you're going to look at four or five different cars and they're all going to operate and drive slightly differently. Most helicopter pilots, military, only fly one type. So it makes it difficult then to make comparisons. So we try and get them to fly as many different types as possible. The Test Pilot School trains U.S. and international helicopter pilots from all branches of the military. It is one of only three rotorcraft training programs in the world. They're the first to respond in the event of an aircraft emergency. Here's a look at the unique trainer, keeping NAVAIR firefighters fit for duty. Training guys on how to put out an aircraft that could be on fire, how to go inside, how to approach. Just work your way in. How to put the aircraft out. Train every day just to make sure that we're proficient, we're fast, we're quick, and we know what we're doing. That's right. If you watch the firefighters, they're completely covered head to toe with their safety gear and basically protects their skin from being burned. He controls the whole aircraft while he's sitting inside that booth. Red knobs off, they actually stop the fire completely. They leave, they leave the pilot lights lit. He's telling them which type of fires to start and when he wants them to start it. And basically he's flipping switches inside of here in order to create the fires. Eight different fires right now and we're doing them in a series. Um, starting with the outside, working to the engine, to the rear of the aircraft, then coming into the inside, to the cockpit and the galley area, moving back into the cabin area. 
what they do is they start on the outside of the aircraft, putting any kind of fire on the outside of the aircraft out, the engines, the tires, or the side of the aircraft, and then they make their way into the fuselage where they do interior firefighting. A lot of times when you're trying to put out these fires, you got to get up that close exactly to put them out. They're going to go in, they're going to start working their way up to the, the front of the aircraft, put that out, and then make a turn and go back towards the back of the aircraft. The aircraft fires are a lot different than our structural fires. Teach them how to deal with the jet fuel that's on the plane and all the different special hazards. And that's the proper way to put out an aircraft fire. You could say it's the world's fastest ship, but it doesn't operate in the water. The lighter-than-air MZ-3A navigates the atmosphere as a flying laboratory. Its low speed and low vibration level provides the perfect environment for conducting scientific experiments. The biggest advantages are it's, it's, the flight hour cost is cheap, it's easy to put gear on and off, and it provides a different, almost a laboratory-like environment for testing equipment. Built like a balloon, the airship uses helium to fly more than 2,000 feet high. Its pressure management system helps to balance the weight of the airship as the gas expands and contracts. A highly trained crew guides the balloon during takeoff and landing. The airship is based in Lakehurst, New Jersey and has been operational since 2006. That's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.